You are watching Eswatini TV. Sibugo Semaswa. A very good afternoon to this to our viewers on this lovely Friday and welcome to our show Home Study, a collaboration between the Ministry of Education and Training and Eswatini TV. I am Noa Zilamini and as always I am not alone. I am with the beautiful Lerato Mabilisa, also joining us in studio are our sign language interpreters Linda Mamba and Tobile Fagutze. Lerato, how are you doing this afternoon? Good afternoon, Nogwazi, and to our viewers as well. What an amazing Friday it's going to be today. I'm loving your spirit, girl. <laughs> now, please tell us about today's timetable. Well, today's timetable is as follows. We have social studies for the grade sevens, religious education for the form threes, English language for the form threes, English language for the form fives, and Siswati for the Form 5s. I hope that everyone got that timetable for today. Lerato, please remind our viewers about our social media platforms. Well, our social media platforms are as follows, dear viewers. We have YouTube, Facebook, and a WhatsApp line. On YouTube and Facebook, we're live from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we have a WhatsApp number where you can post questions when we are live on your screens. Yes, of course. And just a reminder, please text us. Do not call us. Please, please, pretty please. <laughs> and without wasting any time, let's take a quick breather. We'll be right back. Lerato actually will be right back with the grade 7 social studies teacher, Mr. Sibusiso Masego. We'll be right back. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one metre and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Welcome back, dear viewer. Today we're going to be doing um, social studies for the grade 7 learners. And with me in studio right now is Mr. Sbusiso Masego. Good afternoon and welcome to the show, sir. Good afternoon, Renato. How are you? I'm all right. Please okay. kindly tell us about um, today's objectives or let me say, what would you like the learner to have learned by the end of the lesson? And please um, project your voice. Oh, okay. By the end of the lesson, 
Uh, the learners will be able to tell or know the main reasons for the scramble of Africa, why the scramble of Africa took place, uh, and uh, to examine, to examine, to examine the impact of colonialism on Africa. How were the Africans uh, affected by the colonialism of Africa? Okay, yes. thank you very much. Viewers, please remember our social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook, where you can post questions and comments. Sir, without wasting any time, please take us through. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, viewers at home, today is going to be me and you. I'm going to take uh, from where uh, Mrs. Lego left uh, the previous week. Okay. Uh, Now let's go. We are going to look at uh, the keywords that are there. It's colonialism, scramble, impact, and, and concession. These are the words, the new words that we shall be seeing uh, in, in our lesson as we continue here. Now the introduction. The introduction is, co I'm going to just read through the introduction because uh, I've decided to put uh, the things that uh, we have learned about uh, last week so as to put in picture those learners that uh, uh, didn't get the chance to to learn about it and also to remind those learners uh, that learned about it uh, last week okay now i'm going to read here colonialism these are practices and beliefs of a country practices and beliefs of a country uh, which has colonies. It is also called imperialism. Yes. Uh, I also like the definition of imperialism. Uh, it explains better how uh, the, the Europeans colonized uh, uh, Africa. Because imperialism is the... It is a, 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 a policy is a policy imperialism it is a, a policy it is a policy Of a, it is a policy of a country it is a, it, it, a, imperialism is, is a policy when a, a country a, a rule a, using a, a, a war I mean warfare or a, using diplomacy. That is a Sorry, sir. Um, please, can we take a, a, a quick commercial break and then we'll be back and you can continue with your lesson. Okay. okay. Thank you. Wash your hands so you can come in and have lunch. Okay, Mom. Tabo, apply some soap. You shouldn't just use water only. But my hands aren't dirty, no loss. Just because your hands don't look dirty doesn't mean they're clean. We need to wash our hands regularly with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds, just like teacher taught us so that all virus causing germs and bacteria are washed away. Tabo, listen to your sister, baby. It's important to always wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Like right now before we eat, after using the toilet, after touching animals, or after changing a nappy. We must also clean our surfaces and toilet seats with disinfectant. Guys, it's time to wash our hands. 
Guys, I'm home. Welcome back, honey. This is your 1 p.m. news update brought to you by Victor Silombo. In the news today, we'll speak a little bit more about COVID-19, a disease that's infectious and causing problems all over the world. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by the coronavirus. The disease can spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose, or mouth, which are spread when a person with COVID-19 coughs or exhales. These droplets land on objects and surfaces around the person, and other people then catch COVID-19 by touching these objects and surfaces, then touching their eyes, nose, or mouth. Here's a few simple precautions that you can follow to reduce your chances of being infected or spreading COVID-19. Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Cover your mouth and nose with your flexed elbow or use a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of that used tissue immediately in a dustbin. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Maintain a social distance of at least one meter between yourself and everyone else. Drink copious amounts of water to make sure your body is hydrated. And remember, if you develop a fever, a cough, or have difficulty breathing, call 977. Stay safe, stay home. Kids, I hope you are listening carefully. It's very important that we take these precautions very seriously, so we all avoid catching or spreading COVID-19. So, we must stay home for our safety. Okay? Yes, Dad! Welcome back, dear viewer. You still tuned in to Eswatini TV with Mr. Sbusiso, who is teaching social studies, and the topic is the scramble for Africa and its effects. Please continue, sir. Okay, sorry, viewers. It seems that there was a problem with me when I was writing here. Okay. Impact means is strong. it is a strong effect on something or someone. Then scramble means the rushing to grab uh, something for oneself in a form of competition. And then, concession. It is an agreement to allow a group of people to use land that they do not control or own mining. The European countries colonized Africa, that colonized Africa are the Great Britain, Portugal, Germany, France, Belgium, Italy, and Spain. Now, these are the examples of countries that they colonized. Uh, the Great Britain colonized South Africa, uh, also Eswatini, Botswana land, Southern Rhodesia, which is now called uh, Zimbabwe, uh, here was supposed to be Northern Rhodesia, which is called uh, Zambia, Nigeria, etc., and etc. Okay, this, this, uh, just like I said, these are the countries that uh, the, 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 the superpowers, European countries, colonized. They are Mozambique, Portugal colonized Mozambique, Angola. colonize uh, Mozambique okay German colonized German East, East Africa Southwest Germany France colonized Algeria French Equatorial Africa Belgium colonized Belgian Congo Rwanda Italy Italian Somalian uh, Libya and then Spain colonized Rio the Oreo and the Spanish Morocco. Okay. 
let's go now we are going to look into the reasons for colonization of africa i'm going to just read through europeans colonized africa uh, for different reasons they were seeking a uh, new suppliers of resources such as precious minerals metals and farming land okay the minerals that we're looking for examples are gold diamond uh, and ivory they needed new markets where they could sell their manufactured goods in their countries and also to practice their religion freely and also to convert africa africans to christianity okay that's all about the introduction now we're going to get into the into the main lesson of the day now the scramble of africa like we have said the scramble means the rush uh, for colonies okay now the scramble for africa was a competition it was a competition i'd like us uh, you guys at, at home to 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 underline uh, or to look into the word competition there is a competition uh, when a uh, one has to gain or get something in return for example if a uh, people get into a competition like maybe they say they, they, they are running 100 meters they they, they they do that because maybe they, they they want to get a the gold medal for position one of course okay uh, the scramble in, for africa was a competition between european countries to grab more land or countries or oh yes or countries in africa to prove power and strength and prestige the capo this were the main countries which were involved in the scramble of Africa. Basically, there are four main reasons. There are four main reasons why Europeans colonized Africa during the scramble. So now we are saying here there are four uh, main reasons or uh, the reasons that made the scramble of Africa to take place. Okay. These were economic, political, strategic, and for religious and cultural reasons. Those are the four main uh, reasons what made that makes the scramble of Africa to take place. Now, <coughs> let us look at the picture here. We can see that in this picture here, uh, these, are the, these are the European superpowers here. Every, each and every one of them want to have a piece of Africa here. This is the, 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 the scramble. Okay. Economic gain. If we're talking about economic, we're talking about money. They wanted to have money in Africa. They wanted to gain money out of uh, the, the economy in Africa. They wanted to take direct control, direct control of raw materials that they will use to manufacture goods in Europe. If we're talking about raw materials, uh, viewers at home, we're talking about unfinished goods. For example, uh, gold, tea. These are unfinished goods because we use them to, for example, gold. We used gold to uh, make jewelry uh, and we also use tea, the tea leaves. To make tea so these uh, europeans they wanted to take direct control to, to to take the raw materials in africa and go with them uh, to to europe so that they can make a finished good so that they can take it back to africa to sell them uh, to the uh, africans okay let's go ahead they wanted to take control of minerals and fertile soils in the african continent to make money Okay, the minerals uh, that they want to, wanted to take here, like I said before, they wanted to make a finish, uh, they wanted to make a, the, the products out of a, the, the raw materials. In the fertile lands, in the fertile soils, they will make produce. The produce that they will make uh, by plowing the, 
uh, was going to also well, was also transported uh, abroad to the uh, European countries. In the process, in the process of colonial government, in the process, colonial governments forced Africans to work for very low wages, which means they worked for almost nothing. They got peanuts. Uh, uh, they worked for peanuts. I don't mean real peanuts, but they were paid very, very low wages. Raw materials were sent to European factories to make products that were mostly also sold back uh, to African countries for huge, pro huge profits. What we mean is that, uh, for example, they will take the, the coal and then they go to Europe in the European factories they, they, they made, uh, uh, let's say, jewelry, but they, they will take these things for free, for almost free. But when they, 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 they come to sell it back to Africa, then they will sell this at a, 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 for very huge profits to the Africans. Okay. As a result, the European colonialists became very rich, while African, Africa, Africa became very, very poor. They became very rich because, like I said, they took uh, these uh, uh, minerals for free. But when they sell it back to Africa, they result uh, for huge profits. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, strategic reasons. Strategic reasons. The European countries were in a competition to control uh, countries that had strategic importance. A country was strategically important if it had access to the sea or sea roads and had valuable minerals such as gold or, or oil. Uh, let us at home, this simply means that the European countries will only look for countries where they will have access to the sea when they transport whatsoever minerals that uh, they take from the African continent abroad to, 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 to abroad, of course. And uh, they will also they, they also consider a, a, a country as strategical if it had valuable, valuable minerals such as uh, gold or oil. European colonizers became more rich and powerful for controlling countries of strategic importance. In short, when uh, the, 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 the Europeans uh, control uh, these, these countries strategically, they will, they will, it will be easy for them to transport whatsoever minerals, uh, it, was, it wouldn't cost them uh, that much. Religious and cultural reasons. Missionaries from European countries wanted to spread their religion in Africa. They spread their, the European culture as a way of life. They believed that Europeans were superior to Africans in culture. Let me say this, uh, viewers at home, that initially, before the coming of the Europeans, uh, Africans had their own culture. They had their own way of doing things. But the Europeans uh, came and imposed their way of doing things. And they discouraged those that uh, were used in uh, the, 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 the way of, of doing things that were used uh, in Africa. They referred to Africa as a dark continent and they claimed they were bringing light into darkness by spreading their Christianity. This is what uh, the, the European traders and the uh, Europe, uh, European country was saying, that they, 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 they believed that uh, Africa was a dark continent. I don't know uh, who told them that. Okay, many European colonizers behaved in a racist way. By, ra by racist, we mean that they were discriminative to the Africans because they, they, they had taught themselves to be a superior or more important than the, the Africans. Okay. The impacts of colonialism on Africa. We're now going to look at how the, the Africans were, were affected by this uh, coming of the Europeans in Africa. Colonialism affected Africans in many ways. It impact, it Im, its impact lasted for a its impact lasted for a long time after the end of the colonial period. Colonialism affected Africans in the following ways. Number one, colonial authorities created new territorial boundaries. This means that uh, 
the, 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 the government of the day, they made new territorial boundaries from the ones they, they, they found uh, in Africa. I'm going to look at the, at the map here. Let's see, let's, let's look at, at the map here. This is the map of Swaziland before the colonial period. You see, uh, it was uh, like, it was as big as this side, as this size. Before the colonization, before colonization by, by Britain, but they, they, they cut, they made their new colonial boundaries here. You see, this is how Swaziland it is today. All this land here, it was cut off by the uh, Europeans. So now, let me go back. Uh, let me clip it here. Two hours. Okay. Die. They, they, um, I'm not here, I wasn't here, sorry. Ethnic groups of the same origin were split in the, into the areas by new different boundaries. This is what I mean. I'll go back to the map again. If I'll make an example, let's say this place was occupied by the, I'll make an example about the Macaculas. Oh, I'm getting Okay, you see, they throw the boundaries here. They, 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 the government of the day threw the boundaries here. Which means if this place were being occupied by the Macaculas of the same, these people were of the same origin. It means some of the Macaculas will be left this side, some will be left this side. In, in that case, they will be, uh, they were split. Okay. Into, into two groups, of course. Okay. Like I said, ethnic groups of the same origin were split into by new boundaries. They made uh, their European languages the official languages in their colonies. Here, I'll make an example about uh, because Eswatini was, con was, uh, was uh, colonized by the, by, the, by, by the British. Here in Swaziland, even today, uh, we use English because uh, the, 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 the Europeans uh, forced uh, the, 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 their languages to be official languages in business, of course, and also in schools. Uh, also Mozambique, they even use Portuguese today. That was uh, forced uh, to the Africans by the Portuguese government. Uh, Europeans did not have respect for African languages in that languages of the colonies were used in business and in schools. English language in Eswatini and Portuguese in Mozambique. Traditional authorities in colonies lost their power as rulers. For example, King Sopuza uh, lost, uh, he was called the paramount chief instead of being called uh, the king. Traditional laws and authorities were abandoned and the Europeans uh, encouraged the Africans to use their laws and authorities uh, by substituting those of the Africans. Europeans forced their laws and authority. They forced the, their laws and authority to Africans. They took a lot of land from African people. They took a lot of land. They did this by making them to sign concessions. Because concession is, a, is an agreement to use land that does not belong to you. So they made, they, they, they made sure that they, 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 they used diplomacy to take land from the Africans. Uh, and they use this land, they used this land forcefully, they, so they used land and forcefully took from Africans to grow their wealth, mining and growing crops. The crops that are said they were taking abroad, of course. They introduced tax in the form of money. This they did, I'll make an example of, 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 the, of, the, of the hard tax. The hard tax was introduced in Southern Africa Every African who was living in a hut was supposed to pay tax for living in his or her own hut. Now, a, a Fred, the French, those for those uh, colonies that uh, were colonized by the French, they, 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 they you pay tax for owning animals. In fact, uh, the, 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 the tax that uh, these Europeans imposed on Africans, they wanted to take back the little money that they would pay them uh, as, as wages. Africans were made to work for on farms for 
minimum wages so as to pay the taxes. Making Africans to pay the taxes was a way to get cheap labor. In short, these people would work for almost nothing because the, the, the money that they would pay them for working were taken back uh, by paying a uh, tax, of course. Okay. In summary, uh, we may have learned that scramble of Africa is the rush and competition by the European countries to, gap, to grab as many African countries as possible. The scramble of Africa took place because of economic uh, gain, political power, strategic reasons, and for religious and cultural reasons. The impact of colonialism is loss of land by African states, African uh, authority loss of power, introduction of, tra of tax, splitting of economic uh, groups in the same origin and the use of European languages as official languages. European, Europeans introduced formal education. That is why we all think that white collar jobs is like being uh, teachers, nurses, doctors, and uh, etc. and etc. Thank you very much. Rest at home. Thank you very much, viewers, for watching, and thank you, Mr. Sibusiso, for being with us today. Um, it seems that there's no questions, so without wasting any time, please um, can Nogwazi come up next with the next teacher. Bonana, we are not going to get Okay, Maggie. Tabo seven distant seam. I'm going to seven distant seam. Then you can meet it. Um, Shaba must know us. What stands at the quotit? Um, Shaba wish you would have done good. Who made the tantra city case and charong and zip on a man lamb by was cut less than twenty seconds. Jang over was food is a teach. Connock toys to Gabungo and the Macuan and Abanga. Tabo. The little sister of Pila She, whom two of Utitanta Utikes and Sipo and in a Mandila Sobides, the Catalyst and Ganga twenty seconds. Mauto Gula, Maukata was seven days of Umtoy, Maukata Gutsons at Dilan. Noma Maukata Bushinjal Nabuge, who made a footsis and the Imitoy in a Tinsaul Sibu, Dongalogula and Makiwan. Sanbonani. So we will be able to get a lot of COVID-19. COVID-19 is a corona. The CIFO Central is a good thing. The CIFO Central is a good thing. The CIFO Central is a good thing. The CIFO Central is a Pese loyo longa naso, utinza leto tinfo nge tanta, apinza tinze mesho, impumulo nome umlomu. Tinze la kete kungipisa matfuba egu tupole le sifo se COVID-19, noma egu sanzisa. Ungalanzela na tinyatero, keza tanda nge nsipo na mandla shobile, noma usebendise isanitizer. Tsimula noma ukweshelele nge kazi kwe ngoza lo ikobile, noma usebendise le pepa le kufinya. Lelo pepa ubesa ululasha emkonyen. Kwe magutinza emetlo, impumulo, nemlomo ngetanja longa gati kezi. Tina si kala, le singanga one meter emkatsin wako na laba yebandu. Na tanjalo emandila shobile, uta ukinumtimba wako unglo shugumako. Pauti vangata usia lo pilile, kumbe uya koshela, uya shisa, nomu pefu mlagalkun. Shaila inombolo let's see, 977. Kumbula, shala upepi, shale kala. Ni 
ngiyethemba niyeva ukuthi basixwa esabathini boshiba kumqoka kakhulu ukuthi silandzele tonke lekunyatselo kute singatholi futhi singasanzisi lesifo se covid 19 futhi kumele sihlale ekhaya kuze siphephe niyeva kambe yebo babe A very warm welcome back to our viewers and if you have joined, just joined us, I am Noah Zilamini and we are doing from three right now, religious education. Joining me in the studio are our sign language interpreters, Linda Mamba and Toby Lefagutze. Also joining us in the studio is the religious education from three teacher, Nomfundo Tlamini. Nomfundo, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good. Lamini, how are you? Ngapila nami. Nomfundo, what is today's topic and what do you hope the learner should have learned by the end of this lesson? Okay, today we are looking at Jesus' conflicts with mm. the Sadducees. Okay. Yes. Uh, this lesson will help the learner understand the opposition that Jesus Christ faced in his la last week. Okay. Yes. All right, so the from threes must get their Bibles ready. Exactly. Okay. Yes. All right. From threes, I hope that you have heard. Get your Bibles ready. And just a reminder from threes, we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. If you have any questions, of course, you are free to use our WhatsApp number, which pops up from time to time. Nomfundo, Ngos, it's over to you. Uh, thank you, Nogwazi. Uh, good afternoon, viewers at home. Uh, my lovely learners, a very warm afternoon to you too. Yes, we are looking at the conflict. Uh, we are looking at the conflict between Jesus Christ and the Sadducees. Yes, by the end of the lesson, we sh you should be able to describe the beliefs of the Sadducees. You should be able. To, you should be able to give an account of the conflicts between Jesus and the Sadducees. You should also be able. You should also be able to explain how these Sadducees hoped to trap Jesus. It is also important that you should you are able to draw lessons learned from the conflicts. And lastly, you should be able to explain the character of both Jesus and the Sadducees that we draw from the conflicts. We are going to introduce our lesson by looking at uh, the previous lesson, what you did with Mr. Kumalo, uh, still under the same topic, conflicts. Uh, yes, the, uh, the pre on the previous lesson, you looked at two conflicts between Jesus and the chief priests. Here, this is where you looked at uh, the question about uh, the authority of Jesus and also the question on paying taxes. Look at the, uh, the question about the authority of Jesus. The chief priest wanted to know where Jesus Christ got the authority to do all the things that Jesus was doing. He entered Jerusalem on a uh, triumphal, triumphal and he also cleansed the temple once he entered the, 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 the Jerusalem. So you looked at that and then the, Pharisees, the chief priests questioned Jesus' authority. They questioned Jesus where he got the, author the authority to do all the things that he was doing. And Jesus Christ just dodged the question by asking them yet another question. And they said, and he said, by whose authority did John the Baptist baptize? And that was uh, very confusing for them because they couldn't answer that question. If they said John the Baptist got the authority from, mm, from men, the people will stun them because they believe that John the Baptist was a, pro a great prophet of God. If they were to say that he got the authority from God, and then the people will be like, why then don't you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Because John the Baptist talked about Jesus Christ as the 
Messiah, the coming of the Messiah. You also looked at the question about the paying of taxes, whereby the chief priest continued to they continued to question Jesus on the question of paying taxes. They sent spies to ask Jesus if it was correct for them to pay taxes, tribute to Caesar. And what was Jesus' response? Jesus Christ was so wise, so clever, that he knew that whatever response that he gave, they were going to use it to trap him. So Jesus simply asked for a coin, and he said, whose face is on the coin? And the answer was Caesar's. And Jesus said, render Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give God what belongs to God. And that was the end. They failed to trap Jesus. So seeing that uh, these chief priests failed to trap Jesus, Sadducees took it upon themselves to trap uh, Jesus Christ. Let us look at uh, who the Sadducees were before we even look at the conflict between Jesus and the Sadducees. So we're going to look at the characteristics of the Sadducees. Sadducees were, 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 uh, were one of the religious groups that were found in Palestine during the time of Jesus Christ. This group believed in the Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is also known as the Pentateuch. The Torah is also known as the Pentateuch. These are the first five books of the Old Testament, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yes, those are the first book. They contain the law of Moses, which was more, more respected in the Jewish context. Also, this group did not believe in angels. Pharisees were one group that did not believe in angels. So according to the Pharisees, angels did not exist. There was nothing like angels. They also did not believe in the resurrection and life after death. They did not believe in the resurrection and life after death. They believed that once a person dies, that is the end of that person. Death marks the end of an individual. Whatever rewards for that individual, uh, he or she gets those rewards uh, in his lifetime. So for the good that you do, you are rewarded while you are still alive. So they believe that that reward was wealth or living a prosperous or good life. That was the reward that you get while you are still on earth. There is nothing like eternal life. Also, the Sadducees uh, belonged to the elite. This was uh, the upper class. Upper class, uh, wealthy Jews. They were in the upper class, they were wealthy. So since these people were wealthy, also in the upper class, then most members of the Sanhedrin belonged to this group. So that is why we can say, safely say that some of these uh, Sadducees were elected as members of the Sanhedrin. What do we mean by Sanhedrin? Sanhedrin, we mean the Jewish court. We mean, we are, we are talking about the Jewish court. This is where Jewish matters or disputes were settled religious matters or religious disputes were settled. So if you were charged and that uh, case in which you were charged is religious or you are charged for breaking a Jewish religious law, you were not taken to the Roman court where 
uh, we are not we were not you are not taken to the Jewish court but you are taken to the you are not taken to the Roman court but to the Jewish court I will give you an example of our own uh, setting in Swaziland in our communities we in our different communities we have Boba Zangane who takes care of matters uh, pertaining that community so matters con uh, pertaining members of the community are not just taken straight to court they are addressed by Boba Zangane so that is the same situation that took place in in in, in the Jewish community also seducers were more political than religious they did not they were not concerned about religious issues but their main concern were political issues even though they were religious leaders and what caused that they were greatly linked to the or greatly tied to the roman empire so that made them to be more political remember romans were not religious so that is uh, what we can say about the Sadducees. So now that we have looked at who Sadducees uh, are, let's look at the conflicts now that they had with Jesus Christ. Remember, dear Lena, that in our previous lesson, we noticed that religious leaders or these conflicts will be caused by questions that the religious leaders, uh, chief priests, on the previous lesson will ask Jesus and then here the same story applies with the Sadducees they also asked Jesus a question about resurrection this is a story that you may find or that you, you will find in the book of Luke chapter 20 verse 27 to 40 it is also found in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 23 to 33 i have used the book of luke for my lesson yes here we find the sadducees asking jesus a question about the resurrection so they asked jesus a question about the resurrection you will remember dear lena that we have said Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection or life after death. But here they are now asking Jesus a question about the resurrection. Don't you think that they were a bit confused? Let's move on with the, with the story. So this is what happened. They said to Jesus, Moses wrote that if a man dies, Moses wrote that if a man dies without having children, his brother must inherit the wife and raise up children for his late brother. So if, if you are a Jewish man, you die and you don't have children with your wife. So your brother should assume your roles, marry your wife and have children by your wife and those children will belong to the late husband that was the live rights law that was found in the law of moses remember i said they believed in the torah the first five books that contains the law of moses so here in the story they wanted to know whose wife the woman will be during the resurrection when she had married seven brothers who died without having children so their their main concern was that whose wife whose wife will the woman uh, be during the resurrection and then now the resurrection comes from the Sadducees if he had married if she had married seven brothers so this this was the presented scenario so a man had a wife he died before they had children the second brother married the wife he died also without having children 
the dead brother same story also died without having children up until this particular woman had, had married all seven brothers without children they all died and she also died at the end without having any children and then the question is when uh, when uh, after the resurrection in the afterlife whose wife is she going to be and that is a question a question coming from people who did not even believe in the resurrection nor life after death and jesus responded because jesus could tell when people were trying to trap him actually jesus will just read through their minds and their hearts he already knew what they were going to say and jesus responded we marry now we marry now but in the resurrection there is no marriage people are equal to angels and they are the sons of god look at jesus's response we marry now now as in in this life time we get married but after the resurrection there is nothing like marriage there are no marriages in the after the resurrection in the afterlife there is nothing like marriage so that is the first the first uh, point that jesus raised and then the second point that jesus raised is that after the resurrection people will have glorified bodies different from these that we have today in such a way that we won't even tell if this one was my husband and that one was my wife you will just be like angels glorified bodies the sons of god nothing like you were my wife nothing like you were my husband you are just going to be raised to be the sons of god not husbands and wife so that was the question you see them in this uh, beautiful picture you see them here is a beautiful picture that i have put here showing these elite group these sadducees who wanted to trap jesus christ you will see that picture shortly of these uh, elite men dressed in expensive robes showing that uh, these are wealthy these are moneyed they are loaded so you can tell look at the uh, ordinary jews seated there the followers of jesus christ seated just there uh, humbled as they look on the picture uh, we can tell that these are sadducees by the way they look this is jesus himself and these are his followers so this uh, scenario presented these are the people who wanted to these are the people who wanted to trap jesus christ how did they hope to trap jesus christ they wanted to discredit him in front of the crowds you saw the the, the the followers of jesus christ in the picture so this was the problem that the sadducees had jesus christ was always with his disciples he was always with the multitudes so there was no way these people can get jesus christ in isolation so they were afraid that if they would attack jesus christ then the crowd will riot or even beat them or stun them as stoning was more popular in the jewish context so they wanted him they wanted to uh, they needed a way to remove the crowd from jesus christ so they tried to make him unpopular within within their the crowd so they wanted to discredit him in front of the people to embarrass him in front of the people so that the people will lose faith in him and then they will stop following him that is when they were hoping to get him 
they wanted him to look foolish in front of the crowd and make the idea of the resurrection look unrealistic. So if Jesus Christ had failed to answer the question on the resurrection, the crowd would say, ah, this man, he doesn't even know what he is talking about. And they will lose faith in him. Some will go back to Galilee. Some will go back to their families, families which they left to follow Jesus Christ. And they'll be disappointed and say, we left our families for this man. He doesn't even know what he is talking about. So that is what they were hoping. But Jesus Christ disappointed them because Jesus Christ was able to handle that, that question in a way that he even gained more confidence from his followers. And then the issue of the law of Moses, pointing out that uh, if a man is married, he dies without children, then the, the brothers have to inherit the wife. That was the Levite law, a law which was respected by all the Jews. It was like a custom to the Jews. The law of Moses was like a tradition, a tradition to the Jews. They all lived by following the Jewish law. So if Moses discredited the law of Moses, then he will become unpopular and people will lose faith in him yet again. And if Moses uh, set the marriages after the first husbands were invalid, he will also have gotten himself unpopular with, the, with his followers. So if the law of Moses states that a brother inherits his late brother's wife, then it means Jesus Christ must not try to give a different view of that or even try to say that the law of Moses was not, uh, was not okay, the law of Moses was not valid, uh, yes. So here it was very tricky, especially for Jesus Christ, because either answer that he would have given, he would be trapped. If Jesus Christ would have said the wife would belong to the first husband, that will mean that Jesus Christ is saying the next six marriages were invalid. And then the people will try to, will, will then begin to question him. So if Jesus is saying the next marriages were invalid, so Jesus Christ is saying the law of the, the liberate law is invalid. So that will put him in trouble. If he had said the wife belonged to the, will belong to the last husband, that will mean the first six marriages were invalid. So whatever answer that he will give, whatever husband that he will choose, he will still be in trouble. So that is what happened. Then, dear learners, Jesus was very wise, clever enough to answer that question. Very smart to say that he is not discrediting the law of Moses, but what he knows is that after the resurrection, there are no marriages. So you see, he did not discredit the law of Moses. At the same time, he was able to handle the question that they had asked. Let's move on then to look at uh, the other conflict, the other point of conflict with the Sadducees, the question about the Messiah. We have noticed all three you have noticed all three conflicts that the religious leaders will come to Jesus Christ, ask questions to trap him. But with this one, it's a bit different. It's a, this one is a bit different. Jesus Christ here is the one who is asking the question, the question about the Messiah. Let us read the story from the book of Luke chapter 20 verse 41 to 44. Please note, dear Elena, that the same story is also found in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 41 to 46. Like in the previous uh, subtopic, I will continue using the book of Luke. Let us read 
the two verses as they are. But he said to them, but he said to them, how can they say that the Christ is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make thy enemies a stool for thy feet. Thus, David thus calls him Lord. So how is he his son? Okay, let's look at uh, the story then. Uh, my dear form threes. He said to them, to the Sadducees, how can they say that the Christ, the Christ here is Jesus himself. The Christ here is Jesus himself, is David's son. He is said to be, the, he is said to be David's son because he is from the lineage of David. For David says uh, himself in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, the Lord here being God said to my Lord, David's Lord here being Jesus. Okay, so that is uh, that was the question that he asked. Okay, uh, let me rush to our assessment. Uh, can you please do this exercise at home? Compare the conflicts Jesus had with the priests, with the chief priests, and the Sadducees. Then we'll continue with our lesson next time. Thank you for listening, dear form threes. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Before you even say goodbye to your form threes, they do have a question for you. Uh, the question is: They'd love for you to. Uh, uh, repeat the char the characteristics of Sadducees if you pass if you could well please repeat them <laughs> yes I can clearly do that please. yes Sadducees believed in the Torah the first five books of the Bible they did not believe in angels they believed in they did not believe in the resurrection or the afterlife they belonged to the wealthy class the upper class uh, most members of the Sanhedrin were from the Sadducees and they were more political than religious. Okay, all right. I hope the Form 3's got that explanation. And uh, Nomfundo, thank you very much for joining us. We hope to see you again for a very interesting religious education lesson. Thank you, Nobazi. Thank you. Viewers, we'll be back with Lerato Mabilisa again, who's going to be doing from three English language with Putumile Lamini. We'll be back after this. Sanbon and Mesot Lamashe, a Libito Laming in Bussi, Mogas Melaning in Managing Director of Agam Macmillan Education, a in company, a seven dog shipped at Dingwazi, Dingwazi, the Tifuna would sit dissenger doing a good city team being a sand, Ulamalang and Nami, seven delay kaya, Jongo Basisha Sedunga, Tiwani, Le Corona, sitting in Nazi, Sibaga Macmillan, Bandla Vasabenda, Patima Paper, and my computer. Gogonga les Gwindago as Kutaleli Keza Tanja, Namin Keza Tanja and Jalo, Jongo Bang Sebendela Masikaya and Jetanja Tam Meliti Chaliti Shobile, Mfunzi is a food sin, Jongo Bangin Mfunzi Sibusati Shobe.
thanks to a spot of AI, he's actually about to present the news in various different languages, ones that he can't actually speak. Mis padres llegaron al Reino Unido en 1959. I'm very happy to be working with the BBC on the children's program. As a mother, I just am so happy I'll have something I can sit with my children and watch and know that they're getting a, a real international sense of the world as well. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one metre and quickly settle on surfaces. 
This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Welcome back to Eswatini Viewer. Today we're doing English JC with Miss Putumile Yamini, um, the singer, by the way. And <laughs> she's going to give us a bit of something before we start our lesson. Good afternoon and welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for welcoming me, Lerato. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. So please, well. can you kindly, you know, just to break the ice, <laughs> give the viewer a bit of, you know, the voice. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to sing like, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo! He is worthy to be praised and adored. So Hallelujah. we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. Um, from threes, I hope you heard what I heard, and I hope now you're ready. Um, for your lesson, for your English language lesson, ma'am. As much as um, this is so, you know, please can you start your lesson? All right. Uh, thank you, Lerato, for welcoming me. And I'd also like to welcome the learner at home. For today's lesson, I would actually like uh, my learner to have their notebook, their pen, and also their copy of the new English for Life book two because we will be using it for making a lot of examples and I will also also show you a, a, a part of uh, the book which I would want you to also practice with when you are at home. Okay, so in our previous lesson, dear Lena, what we did was we actually went through an introduction of reading and we looked into the different types of, of reading or the different approaches of reading. We had specifically looked into a intensive reading where we said it is when you are reading quickly and trying to um, ensure that you get the, an, an understanding and you are able to also look into facts. And we also made also another type of reading where we said it's when you are now reading extensively. When you are reading extensively, it is when you play, play, uh, place, uh, you, you pay close attention to your text, trying to understand the intentions and the purposes of the writer. And you also try to ensure that you notice the language that has been used by the writer. But for, for today's lesson, we are now going to specifically look into intensive reading. What we are going to notice is the activities that we do when we read intensively, the questions, the order of the question and their strength and what they demand from you as the learner. We are also going to be sharing tips that one needs to look into when they are answering. And we are also going to be looking at the outcomes that are expected from you as the learner. Let us uh, go through the intensive reading activities. Intensive reading activities are activities that include your ability to actually identify main ideas and details. 
when you identify main ideas and details it is when we normally use the skimming and scanning approach when you are skimming and scanning it is when you actually run your eyes through the text in order for you to just get the gist of the text and you are also able to now look into what information is required from you in that text that is why when you are doing an intensive reading activity you normally begin with the question so that you understand what is actually required from you we also read and respond to text that are presented in different varieties that is you are able to read an advert you are able to read a brochure, you are able to read a, a, a research, you are able to read even a notice. So as a learner, you are tested in your ability to actually say that I have uh, met or I have read this, uh, this type of uh, text or this type of writing. And now we also are going to be paying a close attention into when you now make inferences. When you now make inferences, it is when now you try to read between the lines. You actually connect the uh, activities that are done and you draw out your own conclusions from that. The types of questions and their order. By order, I actually mean order of strength or of difficulty. So please note that. So for this, I am just going to uh, use an example from our text, which will be taken from the story Snetemba's family. So I will be using it to just try and show examples from it. I am going to start with recall questions. Recall questions. When you recall, it is when you are actually retelling something. So when we are saying uh, this is a recall question type, it is when we, we are trying to say it is the type of question that requires you to retell the information from the text. So you, my dear Lena, you actually look into the question and you go to your text to just pick the information that has uh, that is actually answering the question that has been asked. So you are actually retelling us. And this type of question, they normally come in different formats. In other formats, you will discover that the question is asking you to list, to state, to mention. Those are recall types of questions because you are actually going to be retelling or uh, taking the information as it is from the text into your question paper. And normally, some of these type of questions, they come through a, a, a use of certain WH words. I am going to speak about these, a, a few of these WH words, but I am sure that you have also met them, my dear Lena, when you were doing uh, your practices at home and also in class. Questions that will come and ask who. These are questions that actually require you to look or find information that will point you to an individual, for you to name an individual, a group of people, or even mention an organization. So when you are uh, usually meeting yourself with a question that says who, it normally uh, requires you to look at the subject of that. Who is it referring to? For instance, we have a question here that will say, who is the main character of the story? Your answer will actually be responding with a name of that person. Other uh, WH questions we have, where? When they ask you where, it is basically trying to say, find a location, find a place. Where is this taking place? So you actually, uh, your answer would normally require you to specifically give a location. Others would be when, wanting you to show us the period in which something has happened. It can be time, it can be a date, it can be a specific moment. So you are able to pick out that if you have met a question that requires you to show where you just go and you are, when, you are just going to go and find a time there. And uh, further, there is a WH question, why, requiring you to state a reason. 
uh, once you once you've understood or when you have understood these wh questions they actually enable you to have a clue of the information that you are trying to find in the text because this wh question they uh, in a way guide you to the question uh, or to the answer in the text there's a type of question a uh, these WH questions, like I, I would have said, they are lower order questions. There are other questions that now require you to apply. And these ones are normally higher order questions. These questions require you to show that you have actually read and you have maybe understood the text. Questions that will want you to compare and to contrast. When you compare and contrast, it is an, a situation whereby you are given two entities and you look at the similarities and the differences of those entities. In other uh, parts, it, it can be that uh, how, is the, how are these things similar or how are these things different or maybe draw out a comparison of these two things. So we normally use certain conjunctions to show that we are showing similarities and differences. For instance, you can say Lerato is slimmer than Miss P. Or you can say that uh, Miss P is taller than Lerato. So in using those conjunctions, it allows you to show that I am making a comparison. So there is no part where you are making a comparison and you neglect the other detail. So it is important that when you make a comparison, you also include the other detail. There are questions that also want you to infer. These questions are questions, like I said earlier, you read between the lines. These are questions that are normally presented in a way that would be suggest how this and this happened. What do you think? They probe your thoughts. Explain clearly. So these uh, questions, like I have said, need, you need to show as a learner that you have actually understood what you have read so that you answer correctly. Uh, in our books, uh, like I said, please go to page 8 and page 9. The, those types of questions are there. You are going to notice lower order questions and you are going to uh, notice higher order uh, questions. For instance, there is a question there that would say, uh, do you think Snetemba's mother was carrying too much on her shoulders? That question is high order because it requires you to look at what Snetemba's mother was doing and from that draw out eh, what do you think. Do you think it, it was a lot or it was less? You would have compared what the writer had given you. Let us move forward. Uh, I also have an example here. This example is also showing us a... Eh, eh, different types of questions it is extracted from page 135 in our books and in this page it is an article that is actually talking about plastic surgery i want to just uh, draw your attention to this first question what is plastic surgery like i said when you recall you are going to visit the text and you're going to take from the text and also uh, give it as it is what is plastic surgery? From what you have, you have in the text, you are actually going to be looking for what? A definition. So you are going to go to your text, identify the definition, and provide it as your answer. In this case, plastic surgery is what is a medical field which specializes in reshaping and the reconstruction of a body tissues for cosmetic purposes. So in that way, you have looked into a recall question. And now there's a question here that says, plastic surgery is not a new practice. Name some information from the article that proves this. When you are going to be doing this part, it means that you are just going to notice what is in the text that will make you see that this is not a new practice. You may uh, go to your answer and see that there's this phrase that shows that many ancient tribes practice it. And notice that the word ancient is the key word because it is that word that will show that it has been done earlier. We are going to uh, uh, go forward and look into another aspect that i want to just make sure that you have understood then we will move to the last part of our lesson answering questions how do we answer 
in normal instances it is easy for us to notice that these are the answers but it is also very imperative that those answers are documented or are written correctly for instance uh, there is a, a, a point that we are going to notice here which touches on punctuation it's very important that when we answer we also notice uh, the punctuation so when you read when you are about to answer your question, you begin with analyzing your question. Why are you analyzing your question? This is because that when you analyze, you are actually going to pick the key words. What are key words? Key words are the words in which without them, you will not understand the gist of the question. So you need those words, you need to understand that this word, when it is simplified, it may mean something like this. So you first identify the keywords, you underline the keywords, and you simplify the keywords by looking at synonyms. Synonyms are words that actually mean the same thing. So by applying or using synonyms, it will also help you because you may find that or you might find that in the article that you are reading, that synonym has been used. So in that way, it will be easier for you to actually identify your answer from the text. Also, you must also notice that answers in other texts are presented in a chronological manner, meaning that an answer for question three will come after the answer for question one and two so you must notice that when they are asking you a question it might be in an order that you are going to find a maybe answer one from this but the second answer will follow it will not normally be jumbled up it is also important to note that when you answer your question you should be brief and straight to the point but being brief and straight to the point does not mean neglect necessary information that is needed in your answer. So you are brief, you are straight to the point, and you are also precise. So by being brief, I mean that just uh, do not overemphasize or repeat certain material. For instance, do not repeat the question. Just go to the answer. And also when I say you are straight to the point, I mean you also are supposed to make sure that you notice that these are the required parts of the information. I remember the last lesson I made an example by using a word of approximation. I made an example about using the word that almost a billion students are learning in our days. So if the question asks, asks you that how many students are learning, please use that uh, include that word of approximation and state that almost a billion. You also are supposed to observe appropriate punctuation. Meaning that if you are answering using a phrase, you are not going to start with a capital letter or put a full stop why you are answering in a phrase a format but if you are answering a using a sentence you are going to observe the punctuation rules of starting with a capital letter and ending with a full stop if your uh, your answer is a, 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 a proper noun these are nouns which are distinct and are important. So they are normally observed by beginning them with a capital letter. So if you are answering and your answer is a proper noun, start with the capital letter. I want to make an example of proper nouns. These are like names of people, a name of an organization, the names of the subjects that you learn, the names of important or his places of historical value. So those places, we begin them by writing a proper noun. It is also important for you to space a number correctly. If you have been given a question that will actually maybe require two details, it is important and, and maybe you are, sorry, if you have been given a question that requires you to give two details and you have been given two lines, number each line and place or write each detail in that line. It shows that you are ordering your work. 
there are certain uh, uh, questions that would ask you and, and ask you that uh, where and when did something happen if the question is asked where and when start with the part of the answer that actually answers the where part and follow with the part that answers the when part this shows that you are chronological even in your identification of information this is very crucial so it is also important that you notice that and you observe your spelling uh, there are certain spellings that are provided for you make use of those uh, provisions and write the spelling that has been given to you okay it is also important now that we have looked into this uh, i have an example here that shows uh, the spacing so for instance uh, we have a question here there's an article that is speaking about ants and we have a question here that says that uh, what can ants sometimes do to irritate us give two details in that kind of a question you are just provided with two blank lines so what you're going to do is you are actually going to number each line that says let's say this is your number one let's say this is your number one this is your number one and now this is your number two so for each line you are going to write number one and for this line you are going to produce the detail for that line you are going to write the number and provide the detail for each uh, line this will avoid you jumbling your ideas